Life does not give the same opportunities to all of us. Unfortunately, some are deprived of certain essential elements of life. Of all the essential things, eyes are perhaps the most important organs. To live without eyes is extremely challenging, more so when poverty, discrimination, ignorance, lack of self-confidence and so on are added to this. This problem is more pronounced in poorer nations like India and in poor villages. Poor village women with visual difficulties can neither earn their livelihood nor can they live dignified lives. People do not know the truth that the visually challenged person is as intelligent and as capable as others are. Given the proper training, those with visual handicap can excel in many fields. Furthermore, as Swami Vivekananda said, each soul is potentially divine. Each soul has immense potentialities, whatever the outer appearances. Yet, for want of help, consideration and care, poor handicapped girls suffer immensely in rural areas. We heard the moving story of a girl who passed out of high school with excellent results but could not enter college for want of funds and help. So, she became insane. All this was disturbing. Seeing all this, a group of dedicated women, inspired by Swami Vivekananda's ideals, decided to do something to those helpless visually challenged sisters. The group visited schools in remote villages and spoke to blind girls. When the group approached some of them with the idea of helping them, their happiness knew no bounds. They had at last a ray of hope. And thus, Dipanita Braille Institute came into existence in May 2000. It was formally registered on 4th January 2001. The institute started functioning in a small house in Shonarpur, West Bengal with no adequate facilities. The aim of our institution to serve the visually challenged girls in every way possible so as to make them self-sufficient. With our limited infrastructure, we had initially 25 students from surrounding villages. Many of these students came from extremely poor backgrounds. Their parents could not even think of arranging for help to take them to schools or colleges, nor private tuitions, etc. Our institution began its activities with weekly sessions by providing food, books, moral support, encouragement, training in handicraft, training in music, and so on. As days passed, our ideas began to get more and more concretized as we understood their wants, problems, and difficulties clearly. However, though the enthusiasm was there, there were neither proper instruments nor funds, nor was there proper training. The secretary, Ketaki Gupta, began knocking many doors and struggled hard to know more about the way the blind are given proper professional help. She registered herself with the Hadley School for the Blind in USA and underwent intensive training in a course titled Self-Esteem and Adjusting with Blindness. She frequented the Blind Boys Academy at Noindapur. She also went to the Ramakrishna Mission at Coimbatore for intensive training in Braille writing among other things. After all this, by 2005, the institution became more concrete. There were brilliant girls who were fully capable of higher studies but remained dropouts just for want of support. We decided to do something for them. Thus, the idea of having a hostel for blind girls came up with the blessings of most revered President Maharaj of Belurmat. A hostel was started in 2006. Thus, residential training began with seven students. Now, there are nine students studying for post-graduation and graduation. We provide everything for free. We give free coaching, books, and also finance their university education. And this apart, cultural training too. Here is a synopsis of our services. One, coaching classes to enable students to go for higher studies. Two, vocational training in various arts. 
3. Training to take part in competitive exams. 4. Training in music. 5. Creating awareness by providing higher ideas. 6. Computer training. As of now, the beginning of 2013, there are 40 students, of whom 31 girls are non-residential. All are studying in various disciplines. Already, 28 girls have completed handicraft training successfully along with their schooling. Six girls are working as teachers in different disciplines. During their period of training, the girls receive daily food, breakfast, clothes, books, and other accessories. We see that they do not suffer from want in any way. Training is one part. The other aspect is expression. In order to gain self-confidence, students need to express themselves also. Thus, we began to arrange for science workshop both in our institute and in Kolkata with stress on mathematics. These workshops are immensely successful. We also conduct cultural events both in our own institution as well as in auditoriums in Kolkata. They are all highly appreciated. The girls sing, dance, speak and show their talents and bring joy to numerous people. We participate in many cultural events like opening stalls in Belurmat and so on. The girls sell some of their creations in these stalls. Our institution also has given training to other institutions in different parts of the country. Braille training to DDRC Agartala Tripura and Sharada Handicraft training program in Almora at Uttarakhand may be mentioned. All our efforts confirmed our faith in Vivekananda's words that given the proper and adequate training, the youth, however disabled they might be, can overcome all hurdles and shine in life. Above all, being Ramakrishna Vivekananda followers, we know that the goal is not just physical well-being but spiritual. So we have made it a point to provide spiritual guidance through talks and classes, prayer and worship, through discussions and readings from scriptures, etc. Further, the most important training is in creating self-esteem. Owing to social neglect, these girls have no self-confidence. We conduct weekly self-esteem conferences where we inspire girls with the life-giving message of Swami Vivekananda, among others. Not just the blind, but even slightly mentally impaired and other challenged individuals take part in these conferences. This gives them hope and courage to face the world with confidence. The most important activity however, is publishing Braille books. We at the Dipanita realized that want of adequate literature in Bengali in the Braille script is a big hurdle. So we have started publishing Braille booklets and books. A number of books have already been published, of which a Bengali-English dictionary with a unique format of providing a lot of information on a particular word is important. Further, we have started a four-monthly journal called Vivek Deep since 2011. Vivek Deep is a braille magazine distributed to institutions in the whole of West Bengal. Vivek Deep carries the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna, Mother and Swamiji, educates students on the Bhagavad Gita, tells them about great personalities like Subhash Chandra Bose and teaches them English grammar in a novel way. There are several organizations helping us. No words can adequately thank all those who are helping us. Our institution is fortunate to have the blessings and constant guidance of the venerable monks of the Ramakrishna order and the revered nuns of Sharada Mutt. American service to India, Asti, needs special mention in this respect. Then there are our volunteers, friends and others who are ready to be at our aid. We have plans for the future. Our plans are to bring education to the doors of the poor, visually challenged girls. Since they cannot afford to come to us, we are therefore planning to have postal courses as the computer is out of the question in poor villages. We also plan to extend our hostel facilities. We want to give intensive training in computers. We wish to work hard to improve Vivek Deep. All this means money providing free residence, coaching and graduation and post-graduation for free all mean a lot of expenditure. So we seek your help always. May our efforts be successful.